Are you feeling frustrated? Are you feeling irritated? Do you have more questions and answers? Well, today I'm gonna clean this mess up for you. I want you just to take a moment and subscribe right here to our YouTube channel. Make sure to hit that bell button that you can be notified every time we go live. I was asked this question, why am I feeling so frustrated? Why am I so irritated? I know I'm supposed to love, I know I'm supposed to have faith, but I feel frustrated. All right, I really think that's a great question. I think that's a question that's gotta be dealt with, it's gotta be answered, and I'm glad you asked that question. I'm super excited that we have the ability to record this live so other people around the world can hear these questions get answered because you are not the only one that has these questions. The world has it as well. I think one of the number one things that is really sucker punching the body of Christ today is what we call carnal words. I think the carnal words are tricking and duping the body of Christ like never seen before. And it's our ability not to fully understand carnal words and not to understand that carnal words are describing a reality of one way, shape, or another. For an example, love or faith or joy or peace. We're talking about the Christian circle right now just alone, but those words are carnal words describing a spiritual reality. Now you might be asking yourself like, how is that possible? Now think this through for a second, okay? Love is man's best attempt to describe a spiritual reality. It's man's absolute number one best attempt. Faith, right? So what happens is, is we look at these words and when we look at these words, we look at them as something we have to achieve, something we have to be able to perform, something we have to do, rather than understanding these words are manifestations of the fruit that manifest the carnal perspective of the word, that identifies, for an example, when Jesus, for an example, left heaven, the seed of God come into the earth. When he came into the earth, that means in the natural body of Jesus represented the reality of God. Literally, this is what happened. Heaven came into earth, right? And then the earth or the, the, the person of Jesus literally at that time became literally the manifestation of heaven. He became the manifestation of God. Jesus said it best. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, right? So at the end of the day, you and I are manifest realities of the Father. Why? Is because the Spirit of God is in us, just like he was in Jesus, right? And that Spirit in us literally manifests the realities of heaven. Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Well, when the Pharisees heard Jesus say this, this is what the Pharisees did. They go, you, you're not of God. You're of, you're born of Joseph. And Jesus seeing this, reels this thing in real quick, and he goes, okay, if you don't believe in me, in my flesh, in my body, in the natural, in the carnal uh, state that I'm in, then believe in the works that I do, because the works that I do are revealing my Father. Why? Is because, now put yourself in the Pharisee's shoes for a second, okay, and look at Jesus, and think about this. You're looking at him, and you're going, how is this possible? He's born of Joseph. They're looking at him according to the carnal state, meaning they're identifying a spiritual reality by a carnal reality. This is what's happening a lot in the body of Christ. We're looking at words like love, peace, patience, joy, or faith. And we're seeing it from a carnal perspective instead of seeing it from God's perspective. This is key to be able to overcome many things in your life. This is why many of you are frustrated. This is why many of you are hurting. This is why many of you have more questions than answers. Why is because you're trying to view God from a carnal perspective rather than seeing the carnal perspective from God's finished works perspective or from God's viewpoint point, right? And because we're looking at it from the opposite viewpoint, we're looking at God from another knowledge, right? We call this the knowledge of good and evil. So we're looking at God from another knowledge, discerning God from a carnal knowledge rather than discerning God from his knowledge of the spirit of God to be able to see his creation 
the way he sees it. Now, if we can capture this, guys, it's going to be able to clean up a lot of the mess in our minds. It's going to help us to be able to clean up a lot of the things and confusion that's going on. Why? Is because the weapons of our warfare, it says in Scripture, are not carnal. That means carnality is a weapon. Well, the question is that you have to ask yourself, and the viewer watching this right now has to ask himself, is whose weapon is it? The weapon is Satan. He has a weapon. His weapon is carnality. What is the weapon? Well, the weapon is, is to get you into a carnal mindset that opposes the knowledge of God, right? This whole thing is a knowledge battle. It's all about knowledge. Which knowledge are you accepting as truth? Are you accepting the knowledge of the fallen realities of man? Or are we accepting the knowledge of God? So we can clean this mess up by just shifting the perspective to be able to see things according to the created realities of God. It's carnality that's tricking us. It's carnal words that are duping us. Why are we battling amongst each other in the body of Christ? It's because the battle isn't most of the time over the spiritual realities. It's over the carnal concept of a spiritual reality because we're looking at a carnal word to define God rather than understanding that God defines the carnal word. <laughs> you see, this is the game changer. We understand this and it unlocks doors. The whole shift of perspective brings a whole nother reality that unfolds an answer to us rather than unfolding confusion. If we're thinking, that things are feeling confused and we're getting frustrated and we're getting irritated. You have to understand when you're feeling like that, those feelings are literally coming from a knowledge, the knowledge that you have accepted as truth, right? Well, when we learn to see things from the created value, now check this out. Jesus is the word, right? Now think about this. Jesus is the word. Now, what is the word? The word is more than just English. The word is more than just vocal. The word is more than just uh, words in a book. Words are living. The word, for example, the word of God is living. It's active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, meaning it's alive. It's a real reality. It's moving and active, right? And the word of God is literally more than just, like I said earlier, it's more than just carnal words. It's more than, than words in a book, right? I always say the word of God is bigger than two covers. The word of God blows two covers off the book, right? Does it devalue the word of God in the Bible? Heck no. It adds value to it. Even the Bible itself said this, that the, if everything was written, there wouldn't be enough books to contain it. Right? That means the Word of God blows the covers off this thing. Right? So at the end of the day, when we understand this concept, we understand that the Word of God is the seed. Who's the Word of God? Well, we know the Word of God, we think carnal state. Well, let's take this to the root. The root of the Word is the Spirit, right? The Spirit identifies God. The Spirit identifies Jesus. It says in Romans 8, 9, that if you are born of the Spirit of God, meaning the Spirit identifies God, the Spirit of Christ, meaning the Spirit identifies Christ, then you are His, right? Well, at the end of the day, we have to understand who we are. We have to understand our seed. Well, the Word of God, the reference point to the Word is the Spirit, right? It says in Ephesians chapter 6, the sword of the spirit representing the word, right? So when we understand that the word of God represents the spirit, Jesus represents his father's spirit. The father represents spirit. It says in John 4, 24, if you're going to worship him, you got to worship in spirit and truth. Why? Because God is spirit, right? The key is here. If we can take all these carnal words of confusion and we lay them all out, faith, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and all the gifts of the, the Spirit and all the fruits of the Spirit, I always look at it like surface level. Carn carnality is the surface level portrait of God right? Jesus in the flesh was a surface level portrait of God, but there was a core substance 
that was inside this circle. And that is the spirit that identified all the surface level stuff. So if we want to stop getting confused by what Christianity is dumping sometimes or the perspectives of things that we're seeing or the way we're interpreting the scripture, we have to understand the seed and understand that love is a surface level word that's describing a spiritual reality. Faith is another surface level word that's describing a spiritual reality. So when we engage the spirit of God, we will manifest faith. We will manifest love of God. See, if I set you in a room right now with a hundred people and I said, what is love to you? I would venture to say that 60 to 70% of the people will come out and give you their perspective, which would all be different types of perspective according to your life and what you've gone through. But at the end of the day, through all of that, we have to capture the realities of God in it because I can get 60 different perspectives of love and try to discover God in that, right? But we have to understand that God is spirit. When we understand God is spirit, now we engage the spirit of God. And when we engage it, we come into the knowledge and realities of the spirit that manifests love, the fruits, right? This reality and understanding this concept that everything carnal is really describing a spiritual reality right and the thing is as God says that he loved the world right so if he says he loves the world then why can't you love the world well if we're looking from a carnal standpoint and a carnal knowledge and we're living by that fallen reality then we're not to love that thing of the world but if we're seeing it from God's perspective and we're looking at the world, of course you can love the world. Why? It's because God created it and he called it good. Has God's mind ever changed? Has God ever thought different about anything? Can anything change God's mind? He says, for he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the question is, what changed? Well, it was a knowledge. It was a fallen knowledge that opposed the knowledge of God that changed. Well, what we do in our born again experience, we're aligning that knowledge into the knowledge of Christ to come back into God's knowledge, his perspective, the way he sees his creation, that then we begin to value it the way he values it. This will clean up a lot of the mess and the things going on in your life. I hope this answers a lot of your questions.